this morning. Thank you because you are the Lord most high. We exalt you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. Thank you for all of us as a church. Thank you from January to the month of May. And we thank you because you have brought us to a season of amazing strides. Thank you for the great and mighty things that you have taught in your heart towards us. And we thank you because we will manifest and fulfill your plans and purposes for our lives. We return all the praise and glory to you this morning. Lord, let the entrance of your word bring light and understanding to the simple. Anoint the mouth of the speaker. Anoint my thoughts. Let me have an option to speak. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation be at work this morning. Grant all that listen and understand the heart in the name of Jesus. At the end of this service, let everyone of us be blessed beyond measure. And let your name alone be glorified. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. Amen. I just have the amen of two people. Come and say it amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to us to the Lord bless you. After you welcome your neighbor, say you welcome to the month of May. It's our month of amazing strides. Can you do it nicely? Do it warmly. It's good to see your beautiful faces again this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, one of the things I found out is that it's not enough to be present in the church. You must have a presence of mind. It's not enough to be physically present. You must be mentally present so that you don't miss out on the presence that God has brought in his presence. Hallelujah. So make sure that you are mentally here, not just physically here, so that you can hear all that God wants to speak to us this morning. Uh, by the grace of God, our Father and the Lord has declared this month a month of amazing strikes. Can you celebrate your entry into a season of amazing strikes? You see what you put in and then you look at How did you get this out with that which you put in? That's the God that we serve. He can magnify your results. Hallelujah. So get ready for amazing strikes. Get ready for testimonies. Hallelujah. I'm going to be speaking to us this morning of what I call E-S-I-C-H-E, having a psyche for more. There is no doubt about the fact that our God is amazing. How many of you agree with that? I don't have the time to speak to you about an amazing God. But if you have been a student of the Bible, you will understand that the God that you serve is an amazing God. There are many captivating moments in my life where by just looking at nature, I try to fathom how amazing God is. Every sphere of human life is a testimony of the amazing nature of God. Oh, you say this artist is good, but there is no artist that is as amazing as God. How do I know? I just look at your face. And you know the uniqueness of his artistic impression that he puts upon every one of us. David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He said, happy am I that my soul goes right. You just look at our uniqueness. If you're short, God makes you as amazingly short. If you're big, he makes you amazingly big. If you're tall, he makes you amazingly tall. There is no form of art that God has put on earth that is not amazing. You just look at nature, look at the cloud, look at the sky. You know, the sun comes in during the day, the stars come in at night with the moon. It makes different templates for different seasons. You know, in winter, you sweep the snow. When you come to spring, you begin to pack the leaves. It's just the amazing nature of God. How does He accept the world in His amazing? You know, you talk about the WWW. I said, God is the web maker that made this world wide web. So amazing. You are in the day here, and in another part of the world, some people are in the night. Isn't it amazing? It's just that, I mean, so somebody cannot come and tell us that we just came out of a big bang theory, that an explosion just happened somewhere, and bam, we came up. No, it is not possible. I, I cannot imagine that people can still be foolish to think that we grew up from earth. If we grew up from earth, why is it that the earth in town are not growing up to become human beings any longer? Behind this amazing structure, there is an amazing God. So it's important for you to have that picture. Now go to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. And let's see the thoughts of that amazing God. I don't have the time to talk about all the miracles of God, but I believe you are a student of the Bible. You will see the amazing church of God everywhere. 
Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Some other translation says to give you an expected end. So you see, with God, there are no accidents. In his amazing nature, even what you're going to be tomorrow has been planned out from the foundations of the heart. That's one of the amazingness, if you permit my grammar. Part of the amazingness of God. That you're not just, it's not that God woke up this morning and is thinking, Alima, Alima, what will I do with you? What will I do with you? This is me. So, what do, and, and your day come. What do we have for Alima? No, it's not like that. It's not like God just woke up and said, damn me, damn me, ah, damn me, what, what am I going to do for damn me in 2022? Long before you were born, every day of your life was written out in this book. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's one of the amazing nature of God. Oh, Jesus came and said, I come in the volume of the book, according as it is written of me. So there are books and there are volumes. There is a 2022 volume. There is a volume for the month of May. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. And just in case you are in doubt, he said, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good place to just say hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah this morning? Hallelujah. I know it, my thoughts. So in that scripture, the other thing that comes to mind is the fact that our God is a thinking God. God has a mind and he thinks. All of this that you see, he thought it out. The Bible says in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth that earth was without form and void. Theologians have said between verse 1 and verse 2, there is what is called the gap theory. That God couldn't have made the heavens and the earth and then they will be void and without form and darkness. That something happened. But let's leave the gap theory. Now the Bible says in verse 2 that there was darkness upon the face of the deep, the earth was without form and void. And the amazing God came by his spirit and moved upon the surface of the waters and he began to do his amazing the Bible says, after that the Spirit moved upon the waters, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He turned the darkness around, because there was a plan in his heart concerning the act that is going to be lighted up. He was not going to be without form and void. So he brought himself back on the sea, and we arranged this beautiful planet that you're looking at. Now, if he did that for the planet, He's saying that's the planet. But concerning you and I, I know the thoughts. Come on now. Can somebody say this morning? Say, God is thinking about me. One of the things that should interest you is that this kind of fact that you're so minute, so infinitesimal in the scheme of events, God's mind is full of you. You know, people, when people become big, they forget you. Are you aware of that? Oh, you say we were friends. If you go to that person when it becomes big and you challenge him and say we were friends, he will tell you that was then, this is now. Just because he's a level or two above you, he forgets about you. All oh, people travel out and they forget about their friends. And you can't blame them. The moment you move forward, you just want to move forward, right? But you see, in his amazing nature, he said, I carry you in the palm of my hands. He said, My heart is full of you. God is the, the one that said, who am I that you are mindful of me? It's a deep thought. We were not even supposed to be thought about. But he chose us. He justified us. He elected us. And then he put us on his mind. Glory to God. That's something to be excited about. Now you see, the plans that God has for you, they are great. Somebody said they are great. I like you to say it with conviction this morning. Say they are great. They are great. The plans that God has for you, they are great. They are amazing. How do I know? You cannot be a big God and have small thoughts. You see, the quality of every man's thought is the quality of his life. I, I talked to you the last three weeks about eternal life. Zoe, the life of God. You see, the thought of a dog is at the level of a dog's life. Are you hearing it this morning? The thought of a monkey is at the level of a monkey's life. 
If you give him banana, you give him plantain, he's not going to eat it raw. He does not understand that there can be plantain cheese, there can be anything raw. He just takes it in his raw state. That's the quality of his life. Because the human life is higher than animal life, that's how you can process things. So you take raw yam. Somebody, I don't know the first guy who cooked yam, but something entered into his mind to say, don't eat that in raw. And maybe he just said it raw and found out that it wasn't sweet. But you see, that's the quality of a man's life. So you think at the frequency of your being. Does it make sense to you? So when God is thinking, he thinks in the class of God. He can't think small thoughts. That's why the Bible says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts, my ways. The ways of God are way higher. The best of your imagination, the best of your dream, when we bring it side by side with what God has planned for you. You are not anywhere around you. And that's why you cannot afford to just think with your human mind. You need a renewed mind to tap into the frequency of God and be able to think the thoughts of God. So God will think in his own class. He doesn't do small things. That's why the things that he does amongst us are called miracles. Because they are big. They are amazing. They are supernatural. It's just his way of life. He can't do something naturally. He's a supernatural God. So all that he thinks are supernatural, all that he thinks are big, all that he thinks are great. And if he formed you, you must come to that acknowledgement of the fact that his thoughts towards you are great. Psalm 119 verse 89. The Bible says that the thoughts of God, they are set to the heaven. They are settled in heaven. So one thing you need to understand about the thought of God for your life is that they are not accident. They are not haphazard. Before God sent you here, He already planned your life and set to His thoughts concerning you. They are settled in heaven. Now the point where we're going to this morning is the fact that despite the fact that God's thoughts concerning you are settled in heaven, whether they will be settled on earth is a responsibility. There is no doubt already established to you the amazing nature of God, the amazing thought of God, that when God sent you here, he, he attached your personality to a mission. That's an amazing mission. He said, that is going to do this on earth for me. When God brought you here, he actually dropped you here on an assignment, an amazing assignment for you to contribute. He said, this is what Tony is going to do for me. Now, you see, those things are settled in heaven. The other part of the equation is to settle them on earth. Settling them on earth is an important task. In Psalm 62, verse 11, the Bible says, God has spoken once, twice, have I heard that power belongs to God. The power to make happen what He wants to do through your life is already with Him. He's not thinking of, oh, it's, it's a difficult task. How am I going to help her? I'm, no, that's not God. The moment he spoke you for all that you are going to be, the power to make it happen is already released. Now, the point is that God's plan can never fail, but the people that God wants to use can change. And I want you to see where I'm going this morning. You see, because God is a big player, and he cannot play small, when he wants to use a man to do his amazing strides on earth, one of the things that he does is that he makes up your mind. You know, we talk of facial makeup. Oh, it's beautiful. You guys are looking beautiful, especially the ladies this morning. Your makeup is on point. Everything is on fleek and all of that. But you see, God's makeup is a mind makeover. Because you see, every time God gives you an idea of what he wants to do with your life, your mind cannot take it. If you read through the Bible, every time God comes to a man and says, I'm going to make you, they will be like, me. With what you have painted, it cannot be me. Why? It's like you're trying to transfer a big file from a phone that has 32 gigahertz or something of that nature. You are trying to transfer that kind of a thing to a small phone that has 2 gigahertz. No matter how you try, that phone is going to be saying no memory. Have you seen something like that? 
The point is that he does not have the capacity of mind to embrace that amazing fire that you want to transfer from the big four to the small four. So you see, in your ordinary human mind, you do not have the capacity to take in the things that God wants to do with your life. I think that's my point this morning. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. If God is going to help you to become all that he wants to make you, one essential assignment or project that God wants to do with your life, he should make your mind over. If there is anything that can be your number one enemy, it's a mind that is not open to God. It's a mind that does not have the capacity to absorb the things that God wants to do. And you see, God cannot do anything tangible with your life until your mind can accept the reality, the truth of what God wants to do with your life. So God is a big player. If you are a club owner, he doesn't mind buying small players. But for you to play in his league, you have to be trained so that you can have capacity to play in his league. Hallelujah. So it's one of the reasons why we say you must constantly expose your mind to the word of God and prayer is so that your mind can be made over. For you to be able to come into that awakening of the things that God wants to do with your life. The problem is not whether God will do it. The problem is do you have the capacity of mind to be God's player for that which he wants to do with your life. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks, because you see, we emphasize prayers, and many times we we downplay the place of your mind. You know, we we talk about your spirituality, and we tend to you know isolate your mind as if your mind is not part of your spirituality. There is nothing that God puts in your spirit that will be materialized except your mind can engage it. Are you listening to me this morning? So God brought the people of Israel out of Egypt in what you call the Exodus. What he was doing with them in the wilderness was trying to change their mind. Because you see, a man can come out of Egypt and still be in Egypt. That's how powerful the mind is. It's a complex part of your life. The seat of your will, the seat of your thoughts, the seat of your intellect. Until you have the capacity of mind that is enlarged enough to take what God wants to do, you really can't feature in God's future. So what God is doing as you expose yourself to the word of God is that he's enlarging the capacity of your mind. And you see, you can have every other defect, it doesn't matter. If your mind is powerful, if your mind is sound, you can become all that God wants you to be. So you read Romans 12 verse 2. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is a renewing of the mind until your psyche, the attitude of your mind is changed. You won't be able to write that. So as much as God was trying to get that generation of Israelites into the promised land, their mind kept them captive. You see, the mind is very powerful. Like somebody painted a picture of um, if, you, if you have a big elephant and you successfully tie it down to something very little for a long time, at some point, he gets accustomed to that position that he, he no longer even tries to break free. And what is keeping him down is not the size of what you tie him to. It's not the strength of the rope that is holding him down. It's just his mind. The mind has been conditioned that he cannot go out. So you can keep a person in this room for a long time. He just runs around this room. And the door is locked, maybe for two years. And then after two years of trying to open the door, the door is not open. He just resigns to faith. His mind is now conditioned to that room, so that even when you open the door, he does not go out of the room. So if you come into that kind of a person's life, you, you will not just take him out of the room, because even though you take him or her out of the room, the room is still inside you. What you need to do is a mind makeover. If somebody prays for you and says, receive a breakthrough, even if the angels of the breakthrough brings the breakthrough and you don't have the capacity of mind to handle the breakthrough, the breakthrough will be converted to a breakdown. Are you hearing me this morning? So there is a mind transformation. 
You see, go read the Bible. Every time God unpicks a man, one of the things that he does is a mind mirror. He said to Joshua, now my servant Moses is there, and you're going to step into his shoes. And show the guy fainted. Like in the shoes of Moses. The great Moses that parted the Red Sea. The great Moses that brought out water. And God is saying, I'm done with Moses, my servant. I'm going to now use you to do amazing strife. Joshua said, it's not me. He said, you are talking to my neighbor. I know that you like to joke. It cannot be me. Because he's being with Joshua, me with Moses. He saw the hand of God upon Moses. He saw that God opened up and saw no people. And the word of a man said, this one is not part of us. He's not normal. It's not normal. So when God says, my servant Moses is dead, you, Joshua, the son of Nun, and I'm like, Joshua, even his father's name does not sound big. But you see, what God wants to do is to take you from a Yimba International, glory to God, and bring you to Arsenal. Come on now. I didn't say man, is somebody angry with me. I didn't say Chelsea, glory to God. Uh, I don't want to go down around this one, amen. But you see, to bring a man out of Eimba or something like that, you know the name they have, African team, the name they give them in Africa is interesting. Is it that you are the Teraka Lions, or you are the Eagles, or you are the Tigers? But if God takes you out of that kind of a place and brings you to a place where the name is Porsche and all of that, you, 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 the, the problem is not the beach first, the problem is your mind. Because you are not used to that kind of a space you have the skill, but the environment will even work against you. You will have issues with everything around you until your mind is transformed. That that atmosphere becomes a normal atmosphere. Do you know that there are people who are afraid of greatness? I'm telling you. When they see big promises, they just open the page. And say, that's that one. It's like you open the Bible and you see the page where God says, you will lend unto nations. You just keep. He said, that one is for Reverend Abbas. It's for that Yale Boy. Yeah. For people like us, if we can, if we, do you understand what I'm talking about? It's a mind issue. If the mind is small, there is little or nothing you can do for a man. The first thing is to make over his mind. The mind has to be transformed. You have to expose. There is an education of the spirit which is contained in the word of God. See, if you don't understand what we're talking about, if somebody asks you to read your Bible, you will think he's wasting your time. You will think he's wasting your time. What God is doing by giving you his word is exposing you to his, his metaverse. His own verse is not meta. He's, he's a God in verse. Praise God. You are not used to that kind of atmosphere. So the word that he speaks will sound strange to you. The God who comes to a man that is barren and does not say, I will give you twins. He said, I will make you, do you remember? A father, not of nations, of many nations. A barren man. Some of you are saying, say a lot. Even you, if they told you something like that, you will laugh. Yes. Not that you will smile, you will laugh. You will laugh that you will face the angel will not be packing you up. He said, Me. I don't know if God has ever sent you a word of prophecy. And you hear the prophecy and you think about your presence. Glory to God. You, you see, because prophecy is futuristic, but your reality is your presence. When you now come, come, I mean, you compare your presence and the prophecy, you are like, <laughs> you just laugh. You laugh. You laugh. But God will try to do a mind makeover. That's what the word of God essentially does in our lives. And that's why you cannot afford to be a lazy student in the school of the spirit. Because it is an extent to which God can convince your mind that he can transfer the fire from heaven into your life. Is somebody hearing me this morning? It is an extent to which God can convince your mind, transform your mind, convert your mind, renew your mind, that the fire from heaven. Because there is nothing we can do about the fact that we want to give it to you, but you don't have the capacity to receive it. I'm going to teach us one of these days about receiving. Receiving is not easy. Are you hearing me? Especially when what, what, when they want to, what they want to give you is big, receiving is not easy. Have you seen movies where people saw money and they first fell down? They first fell down. Red must have told you the story of uh, somebody that 
They must say, for example, you get one million dollars. Is that even the example I cannot get? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Have you heard people like that? Say, even in the example, I cannot get it. So if you give that kind of a person one million dollars, he will go and give it away or waste it. He doesn't have the capacity of mind, the kind of life that God wants to give you. It's not this one you are living on. Is somebody hearing me this morning? The kind of life that is available in Zoe. You see, the reason why some people cannot imagine that you can live righteously is because their mind has not yet been convinced. His mind has not been convinced. As much as he is already the righteousness of God, he cannot leave it out because his mind is not yet transformed. Oh, I said, God is going to bless you. You will let the nations. He will say amen for his neighbor. He does not believe that he is numbered among them that God is speaking to. So God kept on saying to Joshua, Fear not. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. You see, in the book of Genesis, God came to Abraham and said to him again, you know, he called him and he started the journey with God in Genesis chapter 12. I think in Genesis chapter 16, uh, let me see that scripture. God came to him and said, Abraham, I am your shield and exceeding great reward. The guy was still by him. I don't know how many years from Genesis chapter 12, but he was still by him. So when God came and said, I am your shield and exceeding great reward, the guy said, that's what you said last week. <laughs> like, you see, the reason why God keeps on sending you a word of reminder concerning the things that He spoke to you 10 years ago is because He does not want you to give up on it. The reason why He keeps on sending you the word is for, so that you keep a presence of mind and a large capacity that if I've said it, I will do it. You see, God is not using words like we use it. When he speaks, the Bible says his word stands fast. You are the one that should not take your stand. Because you see, that word is not going to move. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. He said, they will not come back to me void, except they fulfill that that pleases me. If you want to read that scripture, he said, except it's fulfilled. So the problem is not the world, the problem is you. If you're not going to feature in the world, God will have to change you and put a new player that has the capacity to play. So you need to develop your mind by the spirit to be able to play in the league of God. Giant strides, amazing strides. Abraham said, you are talking about you being my shield and I did a great reward. You're going to make me a father of many nations, but there is no child. Is it this Eliezer of Damascus that is going to be the heir of my house? Do you know what God did? He did a mind makeover. He called Abraham out of his tent. He said, come out. And the guy came out with God. God said, look up. What he was trying to, because you see, your, your mind learns by pictures. That's why if God says something to you, one of the things you can do is lift the picture of what he said and try to go and get something that looks like it so that you can feed your mind. You feed your mind. The more pictures, and the reason why the devil also uses pictures in movies and all of that is that if he can continuously show you bad pictures, you will believe that bad things are your reality. Do you understand? It's a strategy of the devil. If he, he brings up the picture of bad marriages, even before you get married, you will have had a bad marriage. Do you understand? So what God does is he brought Abraham out and said, look up and count the stars. He said, as these stars are, so will your descendants be. When Abraham saw the picture, his mind was transformed. And the Bible says, Abraham believed. The Amplified Bible says, he trusted without changing anymore. So he was changing before. Because the same thing that God said to him, God has said it to him in chapter 12. But he didn't see the picture yet. That's why you see, when God speaks, he speaks his word, but then you can see the word. He speaks the word, but you can see the word. He paints pictures. 
righteous by his words. So that your mind can capture what he wants to do with your life. When Abraham saw the picture that God was painting for him, Abraham believed and was counted to him for righteousness. Your right standing with God is not the fact that you shake your head and pray three hours because your prayer of three hours can be destroyed by your thinking of three minutes. That's why a lot of people pray and they don't have results that are commensurate to their prayer. Oh, the devil is afraid of your prayer. When you're praying, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost stone, Holy Ghost pepper, Holy Ghost thunder. He, he takes a move, but then he comes to your mind and says, as God said, you will become great. Hmm. You will not be thinking about it. It's true. That thing that God said, you will do, how will he even do it? Your three hours of prayer. He just went down to pray. That's why the Bible says we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil, the strategies, the corniness of the devil, the subtlety of the devil. It's not so much about the power of the devil, it's the intelligence of the devil. That devil you saw from Genesis 3, the Bible says he entered, in, he used the serpent because the serpent was the most subtle of the beasts. So, what the devil uses more to defeat believers is his intelligence. He just cast a doubt on your mind. Because he understands that for as long as your mind cannot receive it, your life cannot enjoy it. The thing that we are talking about, your spirit has already captured it. Are you hearing me? That when God communicates, his speech to do with your life is to paint a story that is supernatural. That what he wants to do with your life is something amazing. Somebody say amazing. What God wants to do with you is something amazing. When he becomes on you, your mind will skip. Say, you want to make me a king? Say, me. Say, in, in my father's house, nobody has ever been a king. Say, yes, I know. What well, people say, Moses was, Moses was lazy. Why was he giving God excuse? If God gave you that kind of a calling, my brother, you will have excruciatis. <laughs> you will just, you suddenly develop that disease. That he wants to take you from the backside of the wilderness and go and use you to attack a world power. Even you, you would think that it's the gods of your father's house that is calling you. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody this morning? You would be saying in your mind, this voice, this voice that I'm hearing, I hope that they have not gotten me finally. You would he gave every form of excuse. But God said, I want to use you. And he succeeded in convincing him. That's why encounters are powerful. When God can succeed to give you an encounter that convinces you, every other thing that he wants to do with your life is easy. And you see, don't assume that you are convinced. Because until you are convinced, you are not convinced. And you see, the Bible says, when they came to anoint men, and Samuel saw them, tall earlier, tall Abinadab. God said, they are tall, but their heart, mind is short. Are you hearing? You can be tall physically, but your mind can be short. You can be big physically, but your mind can be small. I'll show you a story in the book of Luke, I think chapter 19. We already spoke about it. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus came to the field to see Jesus. There were tall men. They wouldn't allow him to see Jesus. He was not the only short guy, but he was the only short guy that he didn't go. He had a, you see, my, the, the topic of the message is psyche for more. I got the inspiration from the tree psycho more. Because you see, the problem is not the obstacle you have, the problem is your mind. If your mind can jump over the obstacle, your life can walk over it. Hmm. He got there and saw plenty of people. You see, Bible says he was short, but he was rich. He was short, but he was chief. He was short, but he was famous. Famous than taller people, richer than taller people. The reason for his wealth, his eminence, his chiefness is his mind, an unstoppable mind. Zacchaeus had a mind that was enlarged. You know how they say he's short guys that go for bigger women? It's because he's not size, he's heart. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. If your mind can carry it, your life will carry it. 
Are you hearing me this morning? Yes, sir. So what you need is to be transformed. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. You see, Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. Those are issues of the mind. There can be no amazing strife if you're still walking in fear. He said, but he has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of, power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of sound mind. If you speak in tongues and your mind is not sound, God is still working on you. Because until your mind is sound, evil power cannot be exercised through you. God cannot do a big project sound that you'll be able to go when God says go. Because the things that God will dare to do through you, there are things that naturally scare men. There are things that naturally scare men. Ordinary men can't do it. It's men with a large heart, a large capacity. Have you seen the mind of David? You think God was stupid when he chose David over the tall guys? In the day that the battle was off and the, 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 the giant of the Philistine, Goliath, was standing, every tall man went into hiding. When the Bible says, I found David, a man after my heart, that was small David, but big heart. He said, he was giving his testimony before Saul. He said, I was, I was standing to the sheep of my father, and a lion came. Come on now. I mean, my brother, if you see a lion in your dream, you will sweat. I'm not talking about physical one. A lion in your dream, you wake up sweating. You, you are pleading the blood of Jesus, the blood of God, the blood of the spirits, everything pleading. But a man that had some man, he said, a bear came and went after it. God saw that this one is a kingly material. A man after my own heart. A man that can dare the impossible. That's the kind of man that God wants to raise. Is somebody hearing me this morning? That's the kind of man. So our prayer point is, Lord, let my mind be transformed. Very important. Is somebody hearing me this morning? That's, that's your essential duty that I just get. I, can't, I mean, I don't want to go into the rest. Maybe we'll continue next week. But your primary prayer point this month, exposure to the word of God, for your mind to be renewed and to be transformed, even in the place of prayer, what God does is to expose and enlarge your mind. He said God is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Because many people don't think. They only ask. Until you understand that God is a thinking God and that he also needs your mind to be prodded. You can't enter into the reality of the things that God is talking about. And if you are asking God for small things that are not captured within his there are things that you don't need God to do. Are you aware of that? Many of the things that we are praying about are things that we actually don't need God. So when you pray, you are saying, ah, he didn't answer me. He's saying, those are not the relevant issues. You see, it's like you bringing a case that should go to a magistrate court. You brought it to the Supreme Court. No matter how much you say your prayers in the front of that court, you can't get anything. Are you aware of that? It's a jurisdictional issue. The court is too big for the questions you are asking. Say, go to the small court. But you have big issues. Yeah, come to Supreme Court. Those are the things that we deal with here. If you say, my Lord, this is my case, then he answers it. Go and even check the quality of your request. It will show you the quality of your mind. You can't dare to ask God for something big. When you come to the place of prayer, you know, Hebrew says, let us come boldly. You, you come timidly. And say, Father, you say, I'm not asking for a Lord. As if you are beating God. Like God. I'm not asking for a lot, bro. I'm just asking that. And God is like, clothes are fine, clothes are fine. When she wakes up, <laughs> praise God, your mind must be transformed. Can we stand to our feet this morning? Can we stand to our feet? Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed. I think it's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 that says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Can you lift up your voices to God this morning and say, Lord, enlarge my mind. Enlarge my mind. Give me the capacity to enter into the reality of the things that you are speaking about. Give me the capacity of mind. The capacity of mind. Let my mind be transformed. 
Let my mind be renewed as I expose myself to your word. As I expose myself to your mind makeover program, let my mind be transformed. That I will be able to take the things that you are talking about. That I will have the capacity of heart to receive the things that you have spoken to me about. Somebody pray to God this morning. Pray to God this morning. Pray to God this morning. Let our minds be transformed, oh God. Let our minds be transformed. Increase our capacity to receive of the things that you are speaking about. Oh, increase our capacity to receive of the things that you have planned for us. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord. The thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. But he asked Jeremiah, he said, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see the branch of an almond tree. Bible says, God spoke to him. So you have seen well. Are you seeing well? Are you thinking right? Oh, help me to see well. Help me to think right. Ah, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 11 that God came down from heaven and he saw men that are falling in their minds. They were still powerful. He said, the thing that they have imagined to do, if I don't stop them, nobody will stop them. Do you have that capacity of mind? Speak to God. Can you put your right hand on your chest this morning, using it as a point of contact, and say, Lord, I cast down imaginations. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against every limitation in my heart. I cast down imaginations and every idea that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I bring every thought into subjection. Come and pray this morning. Until your mind receives it, your life cannot take it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Help us, O God, we receive enlargement in our mind. That we will be able to accept the things that you have said concerning us. We will be able to enter into the reality of the prophecies that is on our lives. Oh, Shabbatam, baby, also to them, Rebanante, Brando, Sebalanabash. We give you praise, Kabbalah, baby, for us. Rebanash, Kabbalah, baby, for us. We are praying. Amen. You already have an envelope. I want you to package your tithe and your offering. If you are giving to God this morning, if you are watching us online, you can please send to Triumphant Nation Toronto at gmail.com. Triumphant Nation Toronto. Let's package something. It's going to be your first offering in the month of May. And you have to give the Lord something good, something great. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, once again, we want to welcome you. It's good to see you. Uh, our focus this month is membership. Membership. And you see, uh, you are a critical part of the body of Christ. Scripture says that uh, even though we are many, say we are one body, many members, one body, many members, one body. So we want to say to you that you are important to us. We value you. We honor you. We celebrate the grace of God upon your life. Thank you for being a member of Ram Foundation Toronto. And let's put our hands together. Let's put our minds together. And keep on walking until this house becomes a green house. Do I have your agreement this morning? In the place of prayer, in the place of inviting others, let's keep on moving the body forward until we become all that God wants us to be. Can you lift up your right hand to God this morning? Father, thank you for my brothers and my sisters that you brought together to your feet this morning for a mind makeover. I come against every limitation. I come against every stronghold. Whatever happened in their individual lives while they were young, whatever bad experience, whatever situation that has held their minds captive, 
under the frequency of your lights this morning, we break every stronghold, we cast out every spirit of limitation, we ask for the enlightenment of minds, even as they expose themselves to the ministry of your word, that their minds will be made over, their minds will be transformed, they will be able to accommodate the things that you have prepared for them from the foundations of the heart. We give you all the praise and glory. I declare that this month is your month of amazing strife. You will enter into the frequency of God. You will think the mighty thoughts of God. God will enlarge your capacity. You will not just be blessed, you will be blessed indeed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Oh, come on, I say it loud. Amen. Amen. Bless you. I'll see you next week.